because I had already said earlier, and I think your orderlies had requested, I think I should table the, the list officially to the, to the House. Uh, and I think, Mr. Speaker, once I do so, uh, in the subsequent conversations in the near future, we will have, we will, we will have, members will have a reference point of all the contracts uh, in the entire, in the entire uh, 800 projects. Um, Mr. Speaker, from then, from there now, if honorable members want to consult with the agency or the ministry, we are available. Number two, Mr. Speaker, very important, we have, we have, I established a procedure of consultation with all leaders, all. And Mr. Speaker, so far, we have had a meeting with 11 counties, the latest being Turkana this morning, county. And uh, as a result of these meetings with uh, Tarakaniti, uh, Kisi, uh, Baringo, we have had, Mr. Speaker, with uh, Turkana, as I said, this morning, among others, it's become more easier for members to make certain suggestions during the meeting. And Mr. Speaker, it's been even more helpful where you have a meeting with the county governor present, because then we deal with duplication of roads and allocation of resources. Again, Mr. Speaker, as I've said, my office is open. We are 11 counties. I will, I will intensify the consultations. I think Ajado is the next county, and we'll make sure that we do all the uh, remaining 36 counties, Mr. Speaker, in maybe in the next three months. Uh, we, our meeting starts at 7.30 in the morning. By 9, we are done. So, honorable members and the DGs are able to go back to their offices. And all these questions and clarifications, once they are asked there, then Mr. Speaker help us to do our job, but also helps the members of parliament to do their oversight work. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that uh, on the specific questions asked, for example, the Navakolo Road, uh, Mr. Speaker, asked by the Honorable Member for Kandui, Mr. Speaker, that Lord has told from 2017, if I remember, 2017, 2018, uh, because I remember a little bit because some of the members had come to my office. And Mr. Speaker, uh, what we have done is this told not because of the money. It's told even at a time when we had resources. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as a result, it is, it is as a result of the contractor, and we have decided to terminate the contract, but by mutual consent with the contractor. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the process of getting another contractor who is more effective is ongoing, and soon, Mr. Speaker, uh, coupled with the pro mechanisms we are putting in place to ensure we have resources, that contract will continue and will be pro prioritized, Mr. Speaker, considering the length of period that has taken for this road to be done. So, Speaker, I'll ask the Honorable, as far as question together with Honorable Sane, uh, on the question of the North as a whole. The Speaker, indeed, we are unable to do new roads, but if you, if you remember in my answer, I put a rider that, Mr. Speaker, unless these are roads that are supported by development partners. The good news in the northern part of the country is that under this project of Horn of Africa, Mr. Speaker, projects, uh, funded by World Bank and, and, uh, and, and African Development Bank, we've been able to do major projects. In fact, some of the major projects, Mr. Speaker, that are going to happen this year or in the next three or four years are all of them in the north. All these are new projects. And Mr. Speaker, it's going to change uh, the, uh, uh, the, the situation in the northern part of the country. We are not only doing the roads, the main tarmac roads, but we are ensuring that all these roads provides spa roads to access all the centers, all the schools, uh, facilitate uh, uh, support in the urban areas. Number two, that all these roads, Mr. Speaker, have ICT connectivity, the, the, the cable, uh, the fiber optic cable, thank you, SPS. The fiber optic cable is going to be laid along uh, these, all these roads, Mr. Speaker, and you will see the reverse, that the northern part, which has been marginalized for a long time, might quickly become the part that will have more ICT connectivity thanks to this project, Mr. Speaker. And going forward, all these projects are going to be accommodated. Mr. Speaker, I want to assure Honorable Farah that these concerns are going to be taken care of. We know that there is a road that's supposed to be done together with the highway from, um, from Lamu to Garissa, uh, a connection to the border, Mr. Speaker, with our Somalia border to support security. You know that we have had issues 
in the recent past, Mr. Speaker, of uh, a few acts of uh, resistance by elements, Mr. Speaker, who don't support development, who want to scare our contractors. But we've been working with the Minister of Interior and Minister of Defense to ensure that this is delivered and delivered on time, um, Mr. Speaker, to change the north to become the land of opportunity. Mr. Speaker, on the question of Masara Road, I think uh, the Honorable Member knows that we have made comprehensive answer, and it's on answer. I don't want to repeat myself. The only thing I want to assure him is that uh, we are looking for ways to ensure it's motorable at this period, of, uh, t uh, at this time because of the rain. Mr. Speaker, the Elasit Road, uh, asked by both um, Honorable Haika and Honorable, uh, Honorable Parashina, um, Mr. Speaker of uh, Kajado South, Mr. Speaker, the Elastic Road is part of the few roads that have been identified for annuity project and it's part of Lot 32 of the annuity program. It's a very important project for us. It should have been completed many, many uh, years ago. But you know the negotiation project of annuity, it takes long. In the ministry, the reports that we have done, Mr. Speaker, show that if we were going to continue to deliver this road under annuity project, it's going to be... Uh, very, very expensive. We are going to use up to, for the uh, period we are going to uh, maintain this road, up to 23 billion. Mr. Speaker, we think that for a road of 67 kilometers, it may not be viable to spend that amount of money, yet in an EPC contract, you can spend about 5 to 6 billion. We are in negotiation with the contractor because he has spent money to prepare for, um, Mr. Speaker, this annuity project. We are having consultations in the, as a ministry to request them to perhaps find a way uh, and in keeping with our procurement laws of turning the contractor to be an EPC contractor, Mr. Speaker, so that then he can perhaps save something from the resources he has spent in structuring this annuity project, but at the same time deliver the project under EPC contract. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have had also consultation with leaders, and uh, the soon, soon when I meet Kajado and Taita Taveta, we will perhaps have had an answer at the progress when we will have reached. Mr. Speaker, allow me to uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, skip the question by my namesake, Honorable Ngogoyo, Ngogoyo of Kajado North, uh, Mr. Speaker, so that I conclude with it. Mr. Speaker, on the question of uh, 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 Honorable uh, Pepela of the Musinko Road, again, it falls within the same rubric of uh, roads that are suffering because of finances and Mr. Speaker, we are going to make sure that we prioritize. In fact, I dare say that uh, I invite the Honorable Member and the team of Kagamega to be the, uh, Bungoma, sorry, Bungoma. for Bungoma, to be the next team that will uh, uh, come for a meeting with us after Kajado, Mr. Speaker, in the, in the, in the second week of uh, next month, so that, Mr. Speaker, we can have comprehensive conversation on all these roads and the status, the good thing with the meetings when we have is that all the agencies are sitting there and solutions to these problems are discussed collectively, both county and national, but also with Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members. And I think I'll extend it to Honorable Pepela to, and his team from uh, 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 Bungoma for a conversation on the same. Now, Mr. Speaker, with your indulgence, uh, my friend uh, Honorable Ngogoyo has asked a very, uh, Mr. Speaker, very serious question on road safety. Mr. Speaker, you know this is very dear. In fact, I, I came here with a very heavy heart because I've been having meetings with NTSA and uh, other ministry officials. Mr. Speaker, before I, I came here, there is uh, instructions that, Mr. Speaker, I issued to NTSA for certain measures to be put in place. Perhaps that will help. And with your permission, Mr. Speaker, if you can allow me three minutes, I can read an, a few of them, not all of them, but for the record of this house and for the country. Mr. Speaker, uh, I acknowledge uh, what my colleague has said, and it's very painful to imagine, Mr. Speaker, that children who are going home from school could not reach home, Mr. Speaker, because of a road accident. And in fact, that incident, Mr. Speaker, is extremely unfortunate because the driver of the vehicle was outrightly overtaking in a place that other vehicles were queuing, Mr. Speaker, in Dalame area. And you all know he was trying to get into the a junction between Maimayu and uh, Kinungi Road uh, by force, Mr. Speaker. And then he met with the lorry head on, and we lost uh, uh, our, our dear children. I feel pained as a cabinet secretary in, in charge of this sector. Sometimes I wish that driver 
I would uh, find him and do something, uh, Mr. Speaker, about him. Uh, but, Mr. Speaker, that is the truth, that the problem is that as a cabinet secretary in a sector like this, you also have to carry the burden of bad manners and bad behaviors of individuals, Mr. Speaker, who have caused havoc in our roads. But that, as it may be, I take responsibility that this, this job is in my docket, and I must continue doing everything humanly possible to provide leadership as to what we are going to do. And as a result, today, Mr. Speaker, I have uh, directed the NTSA to do the following. One, that school transportation shall not be allowed to operate between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. in light with Traffic Amendment Act 2017, Mr. Speaker, effective immediately. Mr. Speaker, all school children must be allocated seats with functional seat belts put on at all time. And we should not ignore to say you are small bodied, you can be carried uh, squeezed in a, in, a, in, a, in a matatu. Number three, Mr. Speaker, school vans, buses, and matatus that are on roadward must be removed from the roads with immediate effect. In the meantime, Mr. Speaker, uh, in the implementation of the intelligence road safety management system, all heavy commercial operators must ensure vehicles with tear weight of 3,049 kilograms and above are fitted with speed limiters effective immediately. Mr. Speaker, in compliance with uh, standards 2295 of 2018, all the 57 licensed speed limiter vendor must, must install approved gadgets that will limit speed record speed data after every five seconds transmit data to both the ntsa and vendor servers and report violations real time mr speaker to ensure all public service vehicles operate with functional speed limiters and multi-agency clinic uh, uh, functional speed limiters a multi-agency clinic shall be formed to verify and validate all speed limiters from 25th of April 2023 to 31st May 2023. All stakeholders, including public uh, uh, transport operators, speed limiter vendor, vendors, and the National Police Service will be incorporated into this, this multi-agency exercise. Number seven, all black spot management, I wish to direct that Kenya National Highway Authority Kenya Urban Roads Authority and the Kenya Transport and Safety Authority to work expeditiously to complete the ongoing road safety audits on all black spots and ensure safety interventions including installation of signage, reflectors and street lighting within the next 30 days. Additionally, all infrastructure around school should be audited and declared school zones with necessary road furniture for the safety of our school children within the next six months. I have further instructed the road agencies to ensure cameras have been installed in all black spots. The first phase to be completed within the next four months, Mr. Speaker. Section 336 of Cap 43 of Traffic Act provides that a driver of a public service vehicle <coughs> or a commercial vehicle shall be required to undergo every three years a driving test under Section 39 successful successfully as a condition for each renewal of license further section 105a1 of traffic act provides that a driver of a public service vehicle or a commercial vehicle shall after every three years from the date of issue of driving license pass on to section 30 of the renewal of site license whichever is the case undergo mr speaker underline undergo a fiscal fitness test including an eye and hearing test by a qualified medical practitioner. Consequently, Mr. Speaker, I have directed that from 1st of June 2023, all PSV drivers and commercial vehicle drivers upon expiry of their licenses will be subjected to a mandatory driver retest before renewal of driver driving license. From 1st of July 2023, all PSV drivers and commercial vehicles drivers will be subjected to a mandatory 
medical fitness test by a qualified medical practitioner bef before renewal of their driving licenses. Additionally, all driver trainees will be expected to provide a medical certificate before administration of the NTSA driver test. On the enforcement of proliferation of substandard products in automotive industry, it has been noted from the crash, Mr. Speaker, uh, investigations that most of the crashes are caused by tire burst, brake failure while on high speed, while others were caused by crashing into vehicles mounted with substandard retroflective strip stars affecting visibility of the road. To address this, I have directed NTSA to form a multi-agency enforcement team bringing together anti-counterfeit agency, Kenya Bureau of Stand Standards, uh, National Police Service, to weed out distributors and suppliers of substandard products and spare parts. In compliance with uh, standard Stat 372 of 2019, a passenger vehicle, vehicle being constructed, this is important, Mr. Speaker, I direct immediate enforcement of anti-rolling bars installation of seat belts and proper anchorage of seats on all public service vehicles including matatu omnibuses and buses additionally i have tasked ntsa through the motor vehicle inspection unit to validate and take necessary action against non-compliant non-compliant vehicles mr speaker the last uh, measure as the seventh measure uh, 11th measure mr speaker to support a post crash management and in implementation of regulation 11g of the PSV regulation 2014, all long distance public service vehicles, PSV, are directed to subscribe to an accident and emergency system with immediate effect. In addition to this, the vehicles are required to prominently display the details of subscription as public information and for passenger reference. Mr. Speaker, additionally, I have instructed NTSA to submit a list of non compliant public service vehicles and heavy commercial vehicles to the insurance regulatory authority for assessment of the insurance policies within the next seven days. In the long term, for effective implementation of the same, I further direct the NTSA to work on finalizing system integration between them and the insurance sector for real-time data sharing to assist the compliance and enforcement. I also directed that all motor vehicle owners with expired inspection certificates must present their vehicles to nearest the NTSA center for fresh assessment of their roadworthiness within the next uh, 30 days. In conclusion, I assure Kenyans of the ministry of commitment to implement regulations, policies and laws and enhance behavioral change through training and sensitization to reduce road carnage, enhance safety and security on our roads and save lives of our road users. We shall work closely with the Minister of Interior and National Coordination and other related ministries and state agencies to ensure these directives are adhered to. I have also instructed NTSA to intensify the Usalama Barabarani campaign and education awareness program across the country in a bid to change the attitude and behavior of all road users. I also call upon leaders, including honorable members in this chamber, cabinet colleagues of mine, governors, state agencies, religious leaders, the media fraternity, and all stakeholders in the transport sector to support these initiatives and to reverberate this clarion call at all levels. I urge members of public to take personal responsibility for their safety by putting on seat belts when in vehicles, wearing helmets when riding a border border, Mr. Speaker, crossing the road at the designated point, reporting drunk drivers and refusing to board, Mr. Speaker, vehicles that are driven by drunk drivers, refusing also to, both, to board, Mr. Speaker, and roadworthy vehicles, and stopping and alighting from speeding vehicles. Mr. Speaker, Usalama Barabarani, Nijukumile to Sote, help us restore sanity in our roads by reporting incidents of traffic violation to the National Police Hotline 911. Mr. Speaker, those are the measures we put in place. And Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the opportunity granted. And uh, by coincidence, the fact that Mr. Speaker, I had this document just having issued now to just get the opportunity on the floor of this very important August House, Mr. Madam Speaker, to make this very important statement related to our uh, roads. Of consequence, Mr. Speaker, I promised this house during vetting that we shall make sure that road enforcement, traffic enforcement, Madam Speaker, will take advantage of technology. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, we are doing everything possible with the road agencies and NTSA 
to make sure that cameras are installed to start with within, in, within the Northern Corridor, Mombasa, Malaba, and also, Mr. Speaker, within our cities to ensure that we are able to catch all these culprits. And we are starting in the next two to three months with the black spots, Mr. Speaker, a number of the black spots that have been identified. I thank you, Madam Speaker.